Two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and I'm here. I've got Dr. Ron Dalrymple. His name is very uniquely spelled, uh, so it's a little hard to say, but I figured it out with some coaching from the doctor himself. You there, doctor? <laughs> yes, sir. How are you, Brad? Great to see you. We Pleasure to be here. Out. Thank you. Now, you're down over <laughs> in the southeast, right, uh, Florida? Well, Southwest Florida, it's super hot down here. It's been like 108, 110 humidity every day for, for a couple of months. Now a hurricane, tropical storm, whatever's coming towards us. So we'll see what happens. Super I hot just, down here. Uh, I did yeah, an interview hot. this yeah. morning and someone was telling uh -huh. me about that. that it's, uh, yeah. Oh, brutal, brutal heat. Yeah, so yeah, unique. See, in yeah. Minneapolis, we get those tornadoes that come in, they hit you, they either kill you or they don't. Oh, yeah. But uh, the oh, hurricanes, yeah. they just beat on you until you give up, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, well, if it's a tropical <laughs> storm, it'll sit for four days and dump water, causing flooding. If it's a hurricane, you have to batten down the hatches and pray, or head north you know, in advance, whatever. So, <laughs> unique place. Anyway. Yeah, I've been to Florida. I don't think I've ever been on the west side of Florida, though. I've always gone mm -hmm. to like Jacksonville. Uh -huh. area. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. you said that, you were in southwest Florida. I thought, southwest. wait a minute, west is California. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a beautiful place, uh, really gorgeous water and all that sort of thing. Nice views, great sunsets. But uh, we have a few few issues. But everybody, every, everybody you live is always something, right? Yeah, always something. Right. We've got yeah, the tornadoes so. and snow. Yeah. And snow and cold and cold. Yeah. 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 It's not as yeah. bad as people think it is, though. Some people think, "Oh my yeah. God, it's a tundra. I'll never be able to make it." <laughs> we do have a hundred degree days up here too. Wow. And we got 10,000 lakes, so we got some humidity here too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of lakes. A lot of lakes. Yeah. And our state bird is in the place. <laughs> so let's get into are you, how long have you lived down there? I've been here about 20 years. Whoa, I traveled the world in advance. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, going back to, to tell you my story briefly, it starts back in 1967. I went to work at NASA at Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. I was a student at the University of Maryland studying math and physics. I got into a gifted student program at NASA, which is really a great place to work. Met some of the greatest people in the world, Nobel Prize winners, great scientists and whatnot. Met uh, tremendous people. Worked for Dr. Paul Lohman and a bunch of other guys. And I studied math and physics, uh, enjoying it very much. And then I started taking psychology classes at Maryland. So by my first semester of the third year, I started to see all kinds of correlations between math and physics and various theories of psychology. And one dark November night in 1969, I'm walking back to my dorm, and I walk into the dorm room, it's cold outside, wind was blowing, blustery, like Minnesota. And I asked a faithful question, could you explain some of the theories of psychology with math and physics? Now I was hit by a thunderbolt, a tsunami of ideas, kind of overwhelming, that if you saw the mind as energy projecting from the brain into space and whatnot, and then reflecting back to you, explained by the laws of physics, it would explain a lot of the phenomena that modern day psychology could not explain. Things like intuitive perception, ESP, all sorts of things, psychonesis, if those things were real. So I wanted to investigate that. So I told some friends of mine about the idea, and most of them said I was nuts. I told some scientists at uh, NASA, and Dr. Isidore Adler, who was a great physicist there, I told him about the idea that mine could be an energy field. And he says, well, you know what? You should go research that. And he spun on his heel and darted down the hall. And so I did for the last some 50 years. So it set me off a whole new course of life. I finished up at Maryland and traveled the world several times. I went to Europe and Asia, South America, many places, studying cultures and languages and so forth, trying to figure out how this all fits together, studying philosophies, people. I went back to grad school at Maryland in 1980 and got a doctorate in 84, so I could study all the fields of psychology and put it all together. Then I spent years doing therapy, wanted to see what really worked in psychotherapy, what helped people, what didn't, what made sense and what didn't. After a number of years doing that, I said, well, it's time to go back to, to school in a sense. So I started teaching college for Maryland. Went overseas, I went to Japan and Korea and Europe. I went to Germany, Italy, Sicily, some really beautiful, great places. Taught a bunch of classes. I taught 15 different courses for Maryland. So I got a chance to overview all the fields at that time, combined with math and physics and psychology. I looked at topological mathematics, calculus, and quantum physics. I came up with a theory published in 2004 called Quantum Field Psychology written uh, when I was in Aviano, Italy, right up by the Italian house, beautiful place. In any case, I put the book out there and it went over like a lead balloon, because you're talking about math and physics and psychology. And a, lot, a lot of psychologists don't like math and physics. 
<laughs> I knew that already. Because, but a lot of scientists and engineers and math and physicists say, hey, that's kind of interesting. So we put it out there for a while and we said, well, we have to do something different. So I went back to the school to study filmmaking. So I took some film classes down here in Florida, got a film degree, got another secondary master's degree in screenwriting, started producing films. Our first film was called Paradise Found 2015, which came out about the discovery of quantum field psych. Experimental film, 27 minutes long. It was a lot of fun making that. Then we got into the rigor of making a documentary, which is much longer. It's two hours. Interviewed a lot of people about the whole concept of quantum field psych, how it all fits together, how it explains various aspects of psychology and science. Talked to a lot of folks in the, in the field of luminaries. Compared it also to the research of Nikolai Tesla. A lot of the ideas that he came up with back in this time, he said that once we start to study the energy dynamics of the mind, we're going to make more progress in 10 years than we made in all history beforehand. And so that's what's happening now. The world's kind of opening up. A lot of people are talking about these kinds of ideas. And right. we're the first ones to give it a scientific basis. We have a hard science theory connecting up science with spirit. So it's also called a bridge theory with guys like Deepak Chopra and these guys are looking for how do you connect these things up? Well, we've got a hard science bridge theory. We're trying to get it out there so people will listen. What we run into is a lot of resistance. because It's a new idea. It's a new theory. And a lot of folks for us are kind of put off by new ideas. So we're trying to put it out there, talking to a lot of folks and so forth, doing these interviews, talking to fine folks like yourself to try and let the world know this is going on. So we've got books and films on Amazon. The film itself called The Endless Question, the two-hour documentary, is free on Amazon Prime. So anybody can go there and see it for free. And we have a bunch of books on Amazon which support the whole idea. But go ahead. You had a question there? You, you must know uh, the name Greg Braden. Oh, yeah. I know yeah. Greg Braden, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I, I did. Uh -huh. uh, he came to Minneapolis and helped, prom I pr helped promote his uh, book, The God Code, when he came uh -huh. here. Oh, excellent. Okay. There's some other yeah. connections there too, because I did some interviews with some yeah. of the people that uh, were in The yeah. Secret, and uh, the, um, ah, they've got uh, a new yeah. thing out, How Thoughts Become Things. So uh -huh. I got to interview right. some of those people, the whole thing with the whole quantum physics and what yeah. the bleep, and you know, the, right. the mm -hmm. book that uh, Deepak right. Chopra wrote, The Seven Laws of uh, Spiritual Success, was the one that got me on my right. spiritual path. And started uh, understanding uh, the whole concept because he did a thing when he uh, came here and did a talk he talked about all the information is all inside this little spot right here with all the different radio waves your all your police band radios your ambulances your radio stations tv stations cell phones pagers all of it's in that one spot all the information is all at the same time and i thought that's mind-blowing so Right. That's the kind of stuff that you, your brains like yours get that stuff. And I remember a time I was in a bookstore and I was reading this kind of stuff and I was like really into it. And then all of a sudden I kind of came out of the trance and I started reading the book and I didn't understand none of it. But for a while I was really in it. So somehow my upper consciousness was reading the book, but my, right. my limited brain didn't understand any of it. Yeah, the idea is we have a, a higher mind within, which it kind of transcends the physical brain, and that higher mind or superconscious mind understands everything. And what you're referring to before is the holographic theory that every, the whole universe exists in every molecule or every atom, in a sense. That uh, if, you, if you could bifurcate that or split that somehow, you know, open up the entire universe. But our theory is we have a higher mind, a higher conscious mind, which we can expand into by the power of thought. If we train ourselves by how we think and how we feel and what we do, we start to open up that higher mind and starts to activate inside our lives. So talking about how you manifest thoughts into things, there's a process where you have to build your energy field. Most folks sabotage themselves by negative thinking, negative feeling, by falling off that energy focus very easily. For example, if you drive in public and let down, there's a lot of road rage. People in Florida often drive very fast and very chaotically while they're texting, this type of thing. So it can cause an emotional shift away from the higher thoughts, right, very right. easily. But the challenge is to stay on those higher thoughts and higher feelings. We maintain joy and harmony as much as possible because that builds your energy field up. So whatever you think about and feel tends to manifest very, very quickly in your life if you maintain that focus. And if what you're focusing on is gonna help other people and do good for all. If you're trying to hurt other people or send out negative thoughts, uh, you know, harming thoughts and so forth, that's gonna self-sabotage. It's gonna harm you and perhaps the person you're aiming upon. So we pay a karmic debt for whatever we do. So if you look back through history, all the different laws given through history, either Mosaic law, given thousands of years ago, or Christic law, or the, and 
information taught by Buddha, by Krishna, by all these folks about history, it's really the same set of ideas expressed in a different way for different times, different language. But it's really right. the same ideas we're talking about today with quantum physics and topological mathematics. We use topology in our theory. So it really is a fascinating time to be like, so the world is waking up and now we have to, there's so much chaos, as you know, throughout the world, the world's got to wake up to a higher level now. Is, is that what's kind of happening right now is the, we've gone so far left and right, the pendulums are swinging so far out there that they don't know where the middle ground is so they can't even see it and they need to get to that, yes. that peaceful well, place of that plane? Sure, well, it's different political forces fighting for control and whatnot, and there's some new forces coming in trying to replace the old forces. So people tend to extremize what they're doing, trying to gain more power from that. So on the political level, there's all kinds of chaos going on. It's more like tribal warfare. If you look back, for example, the times of Henry VIII, back in the early 1500s, you can see the same type of issues going on, where in the court there's all kinds of intrigue and backstabbing and manipulating and tyrannical type thought. If you didn't subscribe to his thinking, you had your head chopped off. You know, it was total tyranny. So many, many reactions have occurred, of course, since then. His, his first daughter, Mary, was called Bloody Mary, she did the same thing, trying to bring back Catholicism to England because he'd taken away with the Church of England. Then Elizabeth, Elizabeth I, was the next queen. That was his second daughter by Anne Boleyn, whose head he had chopped off. And she helped bring in the Reformation. Her son was, for example, Sir Francis Bacon. She was called the Virgin Queen. She hid the fact she had kids because they would have taken away her power. But Francis Bacon created Novum Organum in 1602, which created the scientific method. He also, many believe, wrote the Shakespearean plays. He also, his group of writers translated all the works of the world from Greek and Latin into English. So using the Gutenberg Press, they were able to disseminate throughout the world a whole new set of knowledge, creating a huge reformation. So from King, uh, King Henry the, the tyrannical down through his daughters eventually came incredible creations. So we're going through some massive changes now, probably parallel to that. We're going through a lot of chaos into the chaos. There's got to be birthed at a much higher level thought. Yeah, so please all go that on. stuff that did happen, is it sort of going through another cycle now? Is that what's going to happen? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think things go through a uh, spiral over time. It spirals around from left to right, whatever, and a lot of chaos occurs. But basically, a lot of people also come forward to create something higher out of that, which must happen to help humankind raise up. And the big thing now is for folks to wake up to these ideas that she's mentioned, the law of attraction, uh, the power of thought. We have to realize that we're creating reality all the time of what we think and feel, right. whether we realize it or not. So we're successful at creating our lives and what we're putting out, although we often don't realize we're doing so. So we're thinking negative thoughts, negative feelings. We're very successful at being a failure. But if we learn how to think positive thoughts, positive feelings, and also lift up those thoughts to a much higher level, what we can create is absolutely incredible. You can truly move mountains with the power of thought, but it takes a lot of training to do that. It, you just can't sit down once in a while and do like a focus session, have things happen massively. It takes a lot more of that. You have to do it every day, all day long, stay in that space as best you can, walk that higher path, kind detox like the, the body. Um, yeah. Like the Abraham Hicks kind of stuff, staying within the vortex and you step out yes. of it, it disrupts mm -hmm. everything and you got to get back into the place. But exactly. What about, um, yeah. The stuff with um, I saw some things on the flower of life and the seed of life and creating the Taurus and the the Tesla stuff. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. That's more of a simplified yeah. version of what what you're talking yeah. about. It gets a little more complex yeah. in all this. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a lot of ways to look at the energy field aspects of it. There's more research going on, what's really happening on an energy level, what does the what's energy look like? We're gonna jump ahead once we can see the energy field itself. Once we have instrumentation to look at the energy field that a person has around them, and has every thought impact upon that, and what's it manifest in the physical world? You know, the Taurus idea is really, really kind of fascinating. There's been imagery taken of that and so forth. It goes back also metaphysically, some yogis and, and Hindis and whatnot claim to be able to see that operating, but, uh, if you go back to the teachings of uh, Don Juan, Carlos Castaneda, he talked about the same type of thing, that you can jump levels of consciousness so you can see the mind as like this series of frequencies which reaches into many different dimensions. You can actually shift dimensions at times where you can change your consciousness so the power of thought really is profound, especially when you identify it with much higher levels, much more even divine levels. And what flows through you is massive, massive creative power. So it gets into those divine subjects. Now, a lot of folks in the scientific world tend to avoid that. Once you mention that, they start thinking, oh, no, you're talking about religion and all that. Well, I think really that science and spirit join together. It's really the same phenomena seen from very different points of view. That this well, is there's not a uh, character on YouTube. It's, I think it's called Spirit Science. Something uh, like that. But there, uh -huh. there, it's yeah. a little character. His name is Patch. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty interesting because um, yeah. yeah. that's where some of the stuff I, I watched with uh, the Seed of Life and everything. And that scientifically, where they've done that uh, two slot, 
test with light where uh, it's a wave uh, or a particle. Yeah, right. It depends right, on how yeah. much you're focusing on. So I would yeah. think the scientists would be able to grasp that concept and realize yes. that um, yeah. whatever you right. focus on turns into reality. So if you're focusing on exactly. COVID and war and politics yeah. and death and grief and sour and murder, that's what you're going to create. Exactly, exactly, exactly. There's, 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 there's a lot of energy that travels through space, space, space away from the form, form, like light, that right, interacts with matter like a particle, it helps it form. We must, have just, we must have just triggered something because now your, your audio is coming through real fuzzy. Oh, it is? There, there, okay. It's back how's, now. It's back. How's that? I, yeah, have, I probably hit that. It, it, was I one hit of those, it might have been one of those how's things that? where I said all those words, death and grief and sorrow and murder, and it's like the, uh, Boom. the emoto, <laughs> the uh, water crystal thing, and I disrupted the, the waves. That's Got to it. get back into peace, love, and happiness. Exactly now right. we can hear you crystal clear. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> That's true. The power of thought influences so many things. So when we learn how to focus our thoughts at a higher level and connect with other people doing the same thing, I mean, like a group of people meditating on the same concepts at the same time in harmony can produce massive, massive results. It can also be misused by much darker forces trying to control the world, which has also happened throughout history. People misusing these powers have also been kept secret for hundreds or even thousands of years by various organizations to use them to control the masses. But now the world's got to wake up and understand that we all have these powers inside us. We don't need to be controlled or enslaved by some government uh, overarching and telling us what to do and think and feel. Our universities tend to control us also. Certainly religions do and whatnot. Science also can be a religion to some folks. Some three-dimensional experimental scientists say, well, if you're not doing three-dimensional science like we are, what you're talking about is gibberish. Well, that of course is not true at all because there's infinite dimensions there. In the mathematics, we talk about N dimensions or N dimensional spaces, which means there are many, many dimensions to who we are as energy beings. So that's a key word, energy beings inside a physical body, what we think about and feel and do creates energy waves which project from us and tend to manifest in the world. Fishmen are concentrated in a very, very high level way. I think some of those uh, people that are looking to take control, the reason they are is because of lack of consciousness, their fear yes. of not having enough, and they, yeah, have to con right. they have to contain it. Same thing with the scientists. Yes. If there's only three dimensions, yeah. so let's right. stay in that box. Right. Otherwise, yeah. we don't know what it is. Right. It's very fairy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's exactly. the name of the well, book it, again? It, okay, well, the, the film we have out is called oh. The Endless Question. That's a two-hour documentary, free on Amazon Prime. We have a number of books out which support those same ideas. One of the first books is called The Inner Manager, which came out in 89. That's a short course itself in mind development. It's about a young man who goes on a journey. It's a parable, discovers many levels of the mind in the process. One of our other books is called Eight Days to Create a Power, actually based on university research I did at the University of Maryland. So it's three primary techniques to create using cognitive, emotional, behavioral type processes to bring forth more what you want to create. Another book is called I Love You, God, which is how to book full of aphorisms to activate that higher superconscious mind. And the other book is called The Endless the Endless Question. I'm sorry, it's a movie. The other book is called Quantum Field Psychology, which is the original theory I wrote in 2004 up in the Alps. So quantum field psychology is kind of complicated. It, like I said before, it's for engineers, physicists, mathematicians, some medical doctors, people with hardcore background in science. For most psychologists, they tend to run away from it. Well, that's why we put the other works out there to try to get the ideas across. That's why we went into filmmaking and so forth. Now we're doing a podcast, try to help spread the ideas. So we're trying right, to create so you, a platform uh, of understanding. All that information, yeah. you put it into a movie form where people can sit exactly. down with some popcorn exactly. and actually learn something. Yeah, exactly. And it's free on Amazon Prime. <laughs> so that's cool. Yeah. So it's well, been Doctor, quite a journey, I don't so. like to do these too long because of that commodity of time okay. that a lot of people have. So I'm going okay. to close right. this up. This has been fascinating. I just okay. love listening to what you're talking you, about. And it's, it's something you, I've man. always found interesting because you can get in a peaceful spot and as soon as you open up Facebook and yeah. somebody's yelling at somebody for not wearing a mask, all of a sudden you're out of right. the whole yeah. I understand. I understand. <laughs> Brad, it's been great meeting you. I enjoy talking to you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, anytime you want to talk in, please let me know. I'd be happy to. I will get okay. this up right. and beamed up to YouTube and a copy over to you as soon as possible here. Thank okay. you, Dr. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Brad. Take care. Peace. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Peace. Bye, -bye.